Hey guys, it's Carla here today, and I'm doing a layout with Doodlebug Designs Winter Wonderland for Scrap Shots. Scrap Shots is an online Canadian store, and we're looking at this beautiful paper pack uh, and stickers that are coordinating, and then we have the odds and ends, which are uh, die cut ephemera pieces. We've got some wild whisper sequins and a Marvy snow marker. So we're going to be doing some layering and um, a fun little layout with a little bit of mixed media. And I'm going to show you how to use this Marvy snow marker. So uh, this is really easy, um, really fun. You just basically shake up this snow marker and we're just applying it to whatever areas you want to have the snow on. So you can see I've got a coat on here. And if your marker isn't flowing freely, make sure to put it on a separate uh, tissue or paper towel and you can push it down and there will be a bunch of paint that's released. So you don't want to do that over your project. I'm not actually pushing hard when I paint this on, I'm actually going quite light and the paint is still flowing out. Now, of course, if you wanted a thicker coat, you could go ahead and plunge that down and take a paintbrush and paint something on if you had a larger area. Um, and then a couple spots actually do go over it a couple times. So I'll show you that and the directions are to just set that aside and let it dry and then we're going to heat it with a heat gun after. So I've got a piece of 12 by 12 white cardstock and I've got some Distress Oxide sprays. So we've got Dusty Concord and Seedless Preserves. Those are the two purple ones. And then we've got uh, Peacock Feathers, which is the greenish blue one there. And we're starting off by unscrewing the cap and lightly tapping, spraying a little bit of water. And this is just a piece of um, plastic that I had from a card pack. So just take some, some acetate or some packaging that you have laying around or even a Ziploc bag will work. We're not adding a ton of water to that. So it does warp the page a little bit and I'm fine with that. You could put it under a stack of books after if you felt like it was bothering you. Um, but I really didn't have much concern about that. And I find once it's in the layout, it'll flatten out too. So with each color, I am adding that, doing those steps, doing some water droplets and some droplets of the spray and then putting it onto my page. And I didn't have a ton of water on this one. It was a little bit less than the first purple application. So I didn't dry after the peacock feathers the same way that I did after that first one. And then I've got that third purple color there. And we're just doing the same thing again and just adding color in a few spots around the page. I have a sketch that I'm looking at from Pinterest just to get um, a general idea of how I want my layout to look. I really like starting with a sketch and especially if I'm incorporating some different papers. And now I'm just adding a few splatters directly to the page. So just by again unscrewing that, tapping the nozzle with my finger and I can get a little bit more uh, droplets in certain spots rather than doing a whole mist of spray and I'm going to set that aside to dry because the droplets are a little bit thicker. Now I'm heating up that snow marker and the tip to this is really keep your heat gun moving. Now I have a very hot heat gun which is wonderful for embossing powder. It's a little bit hot for this technique and I may not have been moving it around uh, at first enough. So there was a couple little spots that I noticed it scorched a tiny bit, but I think most heat guns are not quite as hot as this one. Um, and if you do have a really hot one, you wanna make sure to just really keep it moving 
and to maybe not hold it super close. So after one application, uh, you can see how, especially those dots, they really come to life. They brighten up the white, and I find the areas that I want a bit more snow looking, um, some thicker snow, it really works well to uh, give them a shot with the heat gun first with that first layer and then go over it again with the second layer. So there on that house I kept it moving and it really worked well. So I'm just going over similar to the first way that I did it. I'm just uh, dabbing it there and rubbing it over and um, then I'm going to let those dry a little bit. So now we're taking the heat gun and you can see how quickly that second layer really puffs up and pops and you get a lot of texture and dimension. And here's the tree and we've got a lot of lovely puffiness that shows up. You can hold it with some tweezers or you can lay it against a heat proof surface and again just keep that heat gun moving so that looks so awesome and it does have a really neat texture it's almost soft um, but it definitely is stuck on there and it's not moving so there's a look at those uh, completed and then I'm taking this journaling card that I cut from a cut apart sheet and I just rounded the corners with the Cropodile Corner Rounder. And now I'm taking some Distress Oxide ink. This one is Vintage Photo. Uh, any brown would work and this brown wood-like paper is from the Paper Collection Pack. And then this strip is from a piece of the 12 by 12 strips uh, that you cut apart. And I'm just taking coordinating inks and I'm going around the edges. So we've got Salty Ocean is the blue one. And it just gives it a little bit of um, a shadow around the edge there. The purple is Wilted Violet. And then this greenish blue is Evergreen Bow. So they're all nice colors that really coordinate nicely with this color pack. And I'm just drying the drips on that paper and I dabbed some of them with a tissue. And then I'm laying out my layers of paper. So what I find is easier is when I have the papers cut to the size I want, whether you're just cutting them or you're going by a sketch, then I'm laying them all out because sometimes you want to move them around and if you glue them down without kind of knowing where you're going with them, sometimes you have one that's not really in the right spot and um, you kind of have to work with that. So if you get them laid out, then you can start gluing from the top down and I find that this is the easiest way for me to do it. I am using a liquid glue. I'm using the Art Institute Glitter Glue. I really, really like this glue. And Sandy does have this in the Scrap Shot store. You can also buy this attachment that I have on the top. It's a little metal, uh, very fine um, glue attachment. It just screws on right to the top of it. You've got a little pin that you can pop right in the top of that. And then you have a really fine uh, nozzle to take your glue out of. And it's a fairly small nozzle anyways if you don't want to have that metal attachment. But if you're gluing lots of little fine pieces, and I use this for my sequins as well, you really do appreciate having that really fine nozzle. So after I've glued all my top pieces down, you saw that I turned the whole thing over, added my glue, and then glued it onto my page. Now I'm gluing these strips here, so a couple on the top there, and then we've got a strip on the bottom. And I really like the little house in this um, 
collection and it just reminded me of this playhouse that the kids are playing in in the backyard and we had gotten this playhouse from Kijiji a few years ago and even though the kids were getting a little bit big with it they have or for it they have played in that every year and it's really been a fun uh, house to play in and a great thing for the backyard and whether it's summer or winter they had lots of fun with it now I'm adding a title there on to the left hand side of the layout and even though it's a sticker I wanted to pop it up so I put some foam tape and now I'm just adding the layers to the page so I've got those fun odds and ends die cuts and I'm adding them gluing some down and using some foam tape to pop some up and doing some layers and then we've got these sticker sheets there is tons of stickers on these and I like that the sizes are smaller on the cardstock stickers so you've got really tiny animals and really little snowflakes and you've got some hearts and then the odds and ends ephemera are really uh, quite a bit bigger so you have lots of sizes to choose from and you can really mix and match those easily so I'm adding on different um, stickers and snowflakes and I think once you get your base layer down then you can start really layering we've got this tab sticker here and then I stuck another sticker in behind and you can really have fun have fun with these I'm adding foam tape on some of the elements to pop them up so the snowflake is there the larger one popped up and we have the smaller ones beside it and you know just tucking and layering really lets you use these elements because there are tons in the package and you may as well use them added the little heart there there were a couple little areas where I felt like the ink had um, smooshed a little bit in a way that I wasn't super happy with and so sometimes just sticking a sticker or a sequin over those areas is a great way to mask some little spots that may have uh, had a little problem area. I'm even adding some stickers right on this journaling card and that's from one of the 12 by 12 pieces that you can cut into three by fours. And I thought these new sequins from the Strength of the Sequin collection from Wild Whisper, I thought the colors really went lovely with this Doodlebug collection. So this has been fun to do. I usually lay out my sequins and once I get them to a spot where I feel like they work, then I go ahead and use this art institute letter glue and just put a little dot and glue the sequins down they hold them nicely so I do that all around the page just to add some little pops of color this is the fourth layout that I've created with this collection and I still have lots of paper left so I'll link to the blog where you can see the last two layouts that I that I uh, created and then I have another one that I created here and you'll get to see it in a minute. I'm adding some journaling there and I really like to have a ruler to add in some lines so I usually use a quilting ruler. I add in my date because I always forget what date it is and when I go to put it in my album I want to put it in the right album. So there's a look at the completed layout. I love the pops of color, love the way this turned out and the fun images in this collection. And be sure to pop on over to the blog, check out the other layouts. And I would love for you to like and subscribe. I hope you have a really awesome day and hopefully you'll get to do a little bit of creating on this weekend 
There's a look on the left at the other layout that I created. And I hope you just have fun. Bye-bye.